Well, good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to another webinar Wednesday. Wow, can you believe it's December 2nd? Hard to believe. Well, good afternoon. I am your host today, Kelly Bearden. I'm the director of the CSU Bakersfield Small Business Development Center. And uh, we're going to go through number 38. As many of you know, we've been here since March 18th, going through the pandemic on what we know today. And what we know today is uh, a lot different than we knew back in week one in March. And so as we continue to go through each week of new happenings, new small business programs, more relief programs, more things that impact your business, uh, we'll be coming to you live every Wednesday indefinitely through until things get better. So uh, we got a lot to go over today, so let's uh, let's start rolling through this. Uh, most of you realize by now that we're part of America's SBDCs, which is a national program funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration. It's in all 50 states, six territories. In California, they have six regions covering the broad state of California. And we're part of the Central California region, the region that goes all the way to the north in Mono County, to the Nevada state line, to the east, south to Kern County, and then to the Pacific Ocean. And in that area, you will have about six different centers that you can contact. We're located in downtown Bakersfield, off campus in the financial and government sector of, uh, of Bakersfield and Kern County. But you'll find other centers located in Clovis at Clovis Community College, uh, at Merced at the UC Merced, also up in Modesto, the Valley Sierra SBDC, and also uh, other centers such as Cal Coastal covering Monterey County from their Salinas office, and then also San Luis Obispo, uh, Cal, home of Cal Poly. So if you have any need whatsoever, any questions, please go to your local center and ask them and try to see if they can assist you in, in most cases, about every case they can, with free one-on-one -on -one consulting and training and other resources such as training programs like we're doing here today. So today, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, let's be using, for your questions today, let's use the uh, question and answer box and we'll leave plenty of time or we'll create plenty of time or we'll stay here until your questions are answered. So we're going to be uh, using the question and answer box. If there's any other comments you wanna have, you can add those into the, into the chat column, into the chat. Also, uh, we're gonna go through a lot of different resources today. And many of you know that we will do a, a bulk email mailing to those that are here that list all the references and all the resources that we go over today. Have a lot of state resources and others, so we'll make note of those and we'll send those out to you probably no later than Friday. So uh, we have a lot of things today that are really, really time sensitive. Being in December now, we have a lot of programs that are gonna be ending at the end of the year. We have a lot of other uh, programs that uh, were just introduced that are time sensitive on a first come first serve basis. So let's get into these. So what's up today? Today, December 2nd, still, still having a hard time grasping this uh, month of December, 2020, last month of 2020. I know that's uh, refreshing news for a lot of you out there. So we're gonna take, uh, take a good look today at some of the state programs that were introduced by the governor on uh, Monday. So that's gonna take focus today and some of these actually started last week. Um, we're gonna have an update on some of the testing and some of the cases that are going on and uh, the reclosing of our businesses rather than the reopening that we had hoped to talk about. And you know, just when I think, you know, if you were along for the ride last Wednesday, uh, we talked a little about the stimulus and, you know, barring anything substantial, it looked like it could even be the end of January before we had any form of federal stimulus to try to uh, make it a little bit easier and provide some relief to our current woes. So, of course, you know, they reel me in now again, and we'll be going over some of the stimulus programs and some of the packages that have been coming up. It's not a lot different than we've talked about over the last five or six months, but it is different. And there are different groups that are coming forward that we'll go over. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about stimulus, you know, just reel me back in. And uh, we're going to talk about the new state grant program, which was kind of innovative. It's not available yet, but we want to make sure you know about it. Half a billion dollars. We'll get into that uh, relatively soon. 
Not a lot on the PPP forgiveness front. Still, some of the major lenders are uh, very, very, uh, very, very slow in opening the portal and getting loans approved and off to SBA. But we'll touch the timeline one more time today, so you're reminded of the timeline on that. Uh, ending soon programs in uh, in Mono County and in, in rural Mono County. We'll touch on briefly. The Mono Cures ends today at five. So if you don't have your application in and you're in Mono County. You have a busy afternoon in order to apply to get uh, access to some of the funding in Mono County. A little bit about the BeCares program. We've talked about it a lot. And also the city of Wasco has a relief program. So all of those three right there are three grant-based programs, uh, local programs. Obviously, um, you might not be in Bakersfield, Wasco, or Mono County, but do check. Check with your local SBDC if there are any programs in your area that have local CARES money, CARES Act money from March that can be used for small business purposes in your community. A couple other last calls coming up at the end of this month is going to be the IDLE program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loans. And, uh, you know, really, really, the IDLE program, the Economic Injury Disaster Program, has really been from what I have seen with a number of our clients and number of cases we've talked to has been really a very valued safety net. It has been something that is, of course, a loan. It's got to be repaid, but it's repaid over 30 years at generally very low interest rates, around 3.75%. And again, as I talk about idle, um, it is ending the, the end of this month and there are still monies left. But not only is the program ending, but if you received less than 150,000 and you need more, and you can justify that, there is reconsideration process that you can, uh, we've talked about it in the past quite a bit, that the reconsideration process can get you a larger idle loan. And again, um, all bets are off with some of these programs that are ending at the end of the year. So IDLE is one of them that has been extraordinarily beneficial for those that have been able to qualify. Obviously, it's a much more difficult process than just qualifying for the PPP if you had employees. But again, look at your situation. And if you're holding off not applying for IDLE because you're worried about taking on additional debt, there is a one-year uh, opportunity for you to do nothing. And you can always pay it back early with no penalty. The loan fee on it is literally $100 to do a uh, filing with the state of California for collateral purposes. So keep in mind, IDLE's ending this month. Also, the Main Street Lending Program, we've talked about it the last couple of weeks. It's, it's been involved in some controversy. You know me, I don't get into the political side of things. I only uh, advocate for one, and that's our small businesses out there. So the Main Street Lending Program has been out there for larger businesses. It has been out there for, uh, originally started at a million dollars, and it is ending, whereas it could be brought back maybe next year. Main Street Lending is ending with uh, with literally hundreds of millions of dollars left in it that hopefully can either be uh, reused for small business lending purposes or repurposed for other beneficial use for those that need it during the pandemic. Uh, we have a special guest, Eddie Palmar, was with us today, and Eddie's going to talk about one of the new state lending programs and talk a little bit about what he does at Access Plus Capital. And as always, please enter your questions if you have them. And as always, we go to our poll. So as you know, uh, for those of you that have been around for a few of the uh, their last 38 weeks, we have a tendency at times to recycle our polls. And uh, this first poll question is, and try to keep them current, try to keep them there, but kind of give us a lot of factual information. But also on the fly, it gives us an idea of what's going on. But a couple of weeks ago, we had a question that came up when the vaccine uh, was very popular. It's still a very popular uh, contention item. And we're going to ask it again and probably a few more times so we can compare it as we go down along the line of the pandemic. So uh, the poll is going to be, and there it is. Uh, a couple of vac vaccines are very close. If a vaccine is available, you would get it as soon as possible. You'd wait a few months, you'd wait several months, or you don't ever plan on getting it. So 
again, just a little bit on the vaccine. And it uh, looks like the state of California is going to have three, 400,000 doses before the end of this year to actually get out to uh, certain parts of the population. So when the vaccine does appear, would you get it as soon as possible? Would you wait for a few months, um, wait several months, evaluate the effects, or you don't ever plan on getting it? So we have about 66% of you that are in and voted. Uh, we'll give you a last chance to do that. And then what we're going to do is share the results and see if they've, they've changed any. And there we go. Oh, boy. Um, this is a dead heat. Can you believe this? Look at that. Uh, everybody's at 25%. 25% would get it today. 25% would wait a few months. 25% are going to wait and evaluate the effects. And 25% don't ever plan on getting it. Obviously a very personal uh, decision and uh, one that I think when you're at various cycles of your life stage, you weigh differently. You weigh differently your risk of getting COVID-19 and not getting COVID-19. Your own personal effects go into that. Um, but I'm on the list. I'm getting it right away. When it, they give it to me, I'm going to be walking around like this. I'm vaccinated. I, uh, I don't need a mask. I don't want to hide that, that beard. Uh, so anyway, that's my own personal preference is to get it as soon as possible. But I'm an old man. What, what could possibly happen to me? So um, yours might be different, but you know maybe that's a maybe that's an idea there. Um, when the vaccine does come, maybe there's a business opportunity because those that are vaccinated could be walking around without masks now, and they could walk into your business establishment where you have a mask policy. So maybe we need a mask that says I have been vaccinated. Have you? Okay. What do you think? Okay, maybe not. Okay, poll number two. Thank you for voting. I, I never f saw that coming. Uh, last time we did this a few weeks ago, two or three weeks back, uh, I was a little surprised when 56% of you were in the last two category of waiting several months or don't ever plan on getting it, uh, of which I've had enough people in my own immediate family to tell me those same two things. So um, down to 50% this time. So our second poll today is going to be another one that we've asked a, a couple of times. We asked this question last about eight weeks, six to eight weeks ago, back uh, second week in October, so six weeks ago. And let's launch the poll, and it's very, very simple. I, How much should the next stimulus bill cost? In your opinion, would you prefer a skinny stimulus, which is a trillion dollars or less, a big stimulus over two trillion, or no stimulus for now? So... I can tell you, uh, I have the results from our last poll. And our last poll was pretty close between uh, the skinny and the big, you know, a trillion or less or two trillion or over. And who knows, maybe it'll end up in the middle. And we did have a few with you uh, wanting no stimulus. So uh, we do have about 60% of you in right now. I think we're going to give you one last second to vote. 65% are in. Let's end the poll and share the results with you. How much? How much? And there's going to be a new stimulus bill. There will be one eventually. How much should it cost? The next one. Well, 50% of you are for the skinny stimulus, which is a trillion or less. 45% say the big, the big uh, kahuna, the big stimulus, two trillion or over. And 5% of you again, and I say again because 5% of you last time said no stimulus for now. Last time the numbers were a little, uh, slightly different, 52% uh, for a skinny stimulus, 43% for the big stimulus. So really uh, six, seven weeks really haven't altered much of your thought on that matter. So thank you. And let's roll along. So speaking about stimulus, yesterday, and I know they got me back in here again talking about this topic. I. I, I swore it off for a while, but um, yesterday the Bipartisan Problem Solvers, which is a bipartisan group of House of Representatives and Senate members, there's about 50 of them that get together and try to solve problems. They're a centrist group in the middle, so they try to, I guess, bridge some of the differences that they can't solve between the progressives and the conservatives. So 
they're there and this is what they came up with to try to uh, satisfy everybody they came up with a 904 billion dollar program and it has 288 billion for small business and then it also as you see does unemployment you'll see other things in there like for airlines and for a number of kind of items that were on both parties lists so you see some things that uh, one party wanted and the other party didn't so it kind of shakes every direction there so this is the 900 billion dollar kind of one in the middle i believe um the democratic leadership is proposing somewhere around 2 billion and i believe the house or excuse me the senate came out with something yesterday where they didn't mention the exact amount it was probably around 500 or 600 billion a million million billion Whew. so this is kind of one that's a little bit in the middle on the lower side of things but was one that was put out. So that is just kind of interesting that they try to cover a lot of different bases with a smaller amount and uh, kind of the direction that we're going. So the one thing we do have is we do have coming up uh, around the first week, about 10 days away, I believe it's around the 12th, is we have a funding bill that has to be done by the Congress and signed by the president in order to continue funding government. So you've seen enough government shutdowns in the past. I don't think anybody wants one of those. So there is a chance that one of these stimulus bills, if nothing happens, could get attached to that bill uh, early um, in the process, maybe along the 12th of this month. So stay tuned. And that's our stimulus report for today. The state of California has new programs out, and we're pretty excited about these new programs. It's the first time, I think, that since early in the pandemic that is something has been released, and there is a grant program that's coming. As you see, the $500 million small, uh, small grant program. We also have a uh, small business hiring tax credit that actually opened yesterday. And again, this is a first come, first serve. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Make sure you get aware of that. The one thing I like about the small business hiring tax credit is it's not only for income taxes, it's for sales and use taxes. Now, exactly how that works, I haven't been able to analyze in just two short days, but in actually one day since the program has been open, but it does say income and sales and use tax. So if you can get a tax credit against your sales and use tax, and also with the new sales tax deferral that came out on Monday, there could be some type of combinations that are winners there for small businesses. Um, the California Rebuilding Fund, I'm leaving that for Eddie today. And also one of the existing programs that's been around that I really just kind of wanted to make sure I brought up today was going to be that $100 million franchise fee waived on, on new projects, new businesses. Now, I haven't looked into this, but it did kind of raise a question for me earlier today, and that was, gee, I wonder if that $100 million for a franchise fee can be used by existing businesses that are looking to change their entity from a sole proprietor to, say, an LLC or corporation. So I'm wondering if that's a process you have been considering is if the franchise fee would be waived or if you have to be an entirely new business rather than a new entity. So that's one of the interesting uh, uh, kind of things that I think came up on that particular aspect of a program that's been around, but the governor reminded us about it on Monday and I frankly had forgot. So there could be opportunities there for you also, but also those that are looking to start new business enterprises, definitely I know that it'll work for that. Um, we did mention quickly the sales tax deferral for, for quarter four, I believe it's quarter four, that came out on Monday. And again, that's only a three-month deferral. You're still going to need to pay that, and that's on sales up to $5 million. You're still going to need to pay that in three months. However, if it worked with, you know, potentially some other program like the hiring tax credit, um, you know, there's some things that can work out to the benefit of small business. Now, really, the kind of the bigger news was the program that's not open yet, and that's that $500 million small grant program to small businesses. And that's a program, well, let's talk about that in just a second, because it's going to be right there. So uh, before we leave the small business grant program, since I thought I had a slide, 
um, is that the small business grant program is going to happen early next year. It's going to be for $25,000. It's going to be in the like a forgivable loan, like the PPP, like a grant and some of these others that we've worked with. It's going to be done through CDFIs. And I did try to pry information out of Eddie earlier today since he works for a community development financial institution. And they're the ones that are going to be making these uh, grants that are available uh, to a number of businesses. Um, check my notes briefly to make sure I get everything correct. Up to 25,000 for small businesses, nonprofits, cultural organizations, and the grants are going to bridge the early part of the year. So stay tuned on that. Nothing out on that yet, but there's a lot of things that are timely that we do have to get to. And this is one of them. This is if you have 100 or fewer employees as of December 31, 2019, uh, and you suffered a 50% decrease in income tax gross receipts. So, and that is compared, this is going, you have to compare apples to apples. So this is going to be the second quarter, which would have been ending June 30th from April 1st to June 30th of 2019 with the same period for 2020. If you suffered a 50% decrease or more in sales, which I think there are a lot of you have, then really this is a tax credit that I would look into. I know normally when I'm talking about tax credits and you're, you you got to have income in order to benefit from the tax credits and these is state of California. So, but still the sales and tax option that you collect and don't have to remit, if that is an option in this program, I know many of you that might be eligible or might be uh, excited about that. So a few of the key points, um, and this link will come to you. We'll send you this link. It was Senate Bill 1447 back on 9920. That was actually the bill that uh, enabled this to happen. Um, and again, there is a there is a portal open that you can go in and start applying. And again, it is on a first come first serve basis. The program does end on January 15th. After we digest uh, some of this, we'll probably discuss a little bit more on this next week, but it's something to look into and you can Google SB 1447, hiring tax credits. Um, and this is, I believe, also called the Main Street hiring tax credits. So, so do look into that. Looks like an excellent, excellent program that the state has come with. And we've talked about uh, our other state programs. So let's move on at five o'clock today, round two of actually um, Mono Cure is going to come to an end. So if you're in Mono County, you have till five o'clock to get your application in. There's the map of Mono County. I think most of you know where, where it is if you live there. So if you have your business there, uh, just a quick thing on PPP is here's your timeline for forgiveness. And just to remind you, you have basically a 10 month window from the end of your covered period to apply for forgiveness. So for those of you that actually, you know, actually had one of the later dates for the PPP, if you received your 24 week covered period beginning on August the 7th, then that was just before the PPP cut off. If you received your funds on August 7th, then your period would end on December 31st. All of them will end on December 31st if they don't end sooner for that 24 week period. Most of yours probably do end sooner if you got it earlier. Um, but then you do have the 10 weeks to apply. Your lender will have 60 days or two months to actually upload to the SBA portal and 90 days or three months for the SBA to actually come up with a determination. We have now received, I think about five of you who have had uh, your SBA PPP loan actually forgiven by the SBA officially. So congratulations for that. A little bit about our, uh, our case rate and our positivity rate. Since we're gonna be purple for a long time, you see where this kind of has fallen down in the priorities of things, uh, but it's not, it's not a priority. Um, it's still a high priority of trying to keep everybody safe and to try to keep these numbers going down. So we will continue to show you the free testing sites and some of the incentives available for those that want to get tested. 
So we see that kind of lull that we had there in the middle where we actually got into the red level, the red zone here in Kern County. And of course, with uh, 51 of the 58 counties in the purple now, and really uh, no end in sight on that. We're not really anticipating too much, but it really does reflect just the explosive growth that we have seen recently and really the need for all of us to try to try to combat this COVID-19. Uh, and by doing that, the one way that we've encouraged is free testing. Kern County, uh, through the Board of Supervisors, have initiated a new program to where those that get tested at these sites, and do check your date and time, because I do notice I've kind of, uh, uh, there's so many free testing sites this week. Uh, last week, uh, there was a free testing site. Uh, but this week, with uh, Thanksgiving past, uh, there's several, but do check this because obviously the last date is incorrect. So check these dates, and these are the Kern County COVID sites to where if you show up, and I know uh, uh, one of them happened yesterday and today, um, but you can Google that, or I, we will check that for you because that slide does appear to be a little bit incomplete. But if you go to these sites, and there are six of them that are promised by uh, the county of Kern through their public health services department, you can receive a $25 Visa gift card for testing. So uh, I'm not saying come one and come all, but do if you have any reasonable doubt that you could have uh, any of the symptoms or uh, maybe came in contact with somebody, do please get tested. And here's an incentive for $25 to get tested. The Latino Task Force is also doing testing and they have testing um, that's available. So they also have uh, free testing. You might not get the $25 gift card, but you can get the mask and some of the other things. And then also, before we bring Eddie in, um, there is another one through additional current county through the public health of where I believe they are given the, the $25 gift cards. But really, the free testing is where the value is here. It's not the $25. Then It's finding out that you have it and you're potentially protecting your friends and loved ones from transmission, especially those that are very vulnerable. Probably don't even need to tell you that. Uh, quickly, just to kind of see what we have as far as some of the websites. And uh, we're not really spending much time on the California. California site. I believe we covered this, the Mono County Cur. Um, this was one thing. This is the Get Digital. If you want more information, you can actually go to this site through the California Small Business Advocates Office, and you can sign up for updates to when the grant is available, or you can just come here. Um, this was kind of the resource where we picked up the the uh, this uh, vice.com. This is where we picked up the actual amounts and actually the framework for the next stimulus and so forth. There is free testing also in Mono County this week, so up there. And in Inyo and Mono, we're not looking at you this week, but you're two of the counties that are not in the purple, still red, so hang in there. Okay. Let me go back here and introduce our guest speaker today is going to be Edward Palmar. Eddie has leveraged 16 years of banking and lending experience to become a very competent SBA or small business lender throughout Kern County and beyond. As the business development manager for um, Access Plus Capital, which is a Fresno-based nonprofit community financial institution, CDFI, thrives in challenging environment. Also, Eddie has been uh, a member of our esteemed downtown uh, Bakersfield community out of the self-help credit union office that he was going to probably mention. But enough about what I have to say about him, other than the fact that he is a CSUB alumni. He has that Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, which you'll hear me say repeatedly on this webinar. That is a good degree. Good job, Eddie. <laughs> so, Eddie, um, take it away. Yeah, so thank you for the introduction, and um, I'm happy to be here to help everybody get some more information regarding to the new California Rebuilding Loan Fund um, uh, that's out there right now that's just been presented as of no November 20th. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, I know there, uh, Kelly did mention some things about some grants coming soon. 
um, for the city of Bakersfield. So um, my company, Access Plus Capital, like uh, Kelly mentioned, is a certified development financial institution. Uh, we will be participating in that. So um, things are being uh, finalized. You know, we were anticipated to start the program last month, early this month, but unfortunately there's been there's been a lot going on with not only our company, but also with the city that's kind of been delayed, but we, we are in the, uh, the last, last part of just finalizing everything. So, so like Kelly mentioned, I'm going to be uh, talking about the California Rebuilding Loan Fund um, that's, that has just been start, that started on November 20th, and I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, this is some information that we received as a CD5 lender that's going to kind of like our guidelines and um, our go-to resource to to ensure that we're giving the right information to all of our, our business owners. So um, let me just share my screen real quick, make sure that um, we got everything going in. And do we all see that? Hopefully we can. Um, so what this is, is the California Building Fund is an economic recovery loan program to support California small businesses, especially those located in economically disadvantaged and historically underbanked areas of the state of <clears throat> businesses with 50 full-time employees or fewer and gross less than 2.5 million in revenues are eligible to apply. Here is the website to apply and for um, additional information. So I'm gonna take 10 seconds for everybody to be able to jot it down and whatnot before I start scrolling downward. Um, but you know, this just started, I was talking to Kelly earlier and um, we didn't get much applicants, but um, the past few days we've been getting a lot a lot of uh, applicants um, that were submitted through our portal so caloanfund.org is where you would want to go um, and how is this being funded well it's being funded um, by the state's um, California the, the state of California's infrastructure economic development bank also known as iBank and private funders including banks and foundations these loans are being offered through CDFIs only so my company access plus capital is one of the participating lenders for this um, so we would be um, one to if you are matched with us, which I'll go over the process a little bit. We you would we would get a notification, and one of us will contact you. So when does this start? It started on November twentieth. So again, it, we it just started, and we it was slow traction. I don't think many people knew about it, but then uh, it started picking up traction. So we're getting a lot of phone calls, um, questions, applicants, and so forth. So. So what kind of businesses are able to, able to, um, to apply? The fund is aimed to, at helping small businesses across every county and region of California, nearly all industries, particularly those located in economically disadvantaged and historically underserved areas. To qualify again, 50, 50 employees or less, and the growth sales have to be 2.5 or less in, in 2019. Um, if you apply prior to it going live, it's the process is going to go. Uh, you're going to be uh, emailed, and that's going to send you through a portal to to choose a lender to 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 work with to see if you're going to be eligible for for the loan. Um, see, what if I need help completing my my small business loan application? Well, here's some four resources here that can that can help you out. We got Venturize, that's Venturize.org. Um, we'll help you find local resources out we're based on where you live. Cameo. Pacific Community Adventures, and also the California Small Business Development Centers, just the Kelly, Kelly's team out here in Bakersfield, and the California Business, business, business Centers, depending on if there's one in your local area, which I know we have one here in Bakersfield that just started, I believe, last year, um, we, they will be willing help. And also, and if you need to get in contact with the CDFI lender, you can definitely um, reach out to us, and we will definitely guide you in the right direction. If not, we will try to help you with, with, um, with, the, with the application. Um, so who needs to fill out this application? Um, any business owner, partner, whomever has at least um, the, has the highest um, ownership or large ownership, I should say, would have to apply. However, any anyone that has 20% or more ownership will also have to be required to attest to the information provided. Not only are they going to attest, but they also have to apply. So if you're an, uh, 20, if you own 20% of the company, you all you would have to apply. How soon can I get my money once the loan is approved? It's a case by case by scenario. Um, you know, we are extremely busy. You know, we are, I don't know, depending on other the CDFIs are out there, we have a staff of 12 to 15. So we are working diligently. You know, I, I'm working more than my regular hours because I, we want to get this in. We want this money out. We want to help everybody out. Um, we are anticipating two to three weeks out. It can take longer if 
the information that's requested um, through our application is not presented. You could submit the app, I can get to the app within 24 hours. And if there's still, if there's some items missing, we can't move forward until all documentation is provided. So if you were to, you, uh, through our portal, our application um, portal, it's self-explanatory as to what needs to be provided. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail what's going to be provided, but it's not it's not a lot of paperwork um, compared to if you were to you know apply for a traditional loan. Um, so how much can I borrow? This is like the main question. Like, what can I borrow? So max amount loan amount would be a hundred thousand dollars, and they determine this by the the last three months of um, your gross sales average wise. So this example here, so determine to your business average monthly revenue for an estimate of potential loan size. The following example is provided for your reference. So September, your revenues were 10,000. October um, was 15,000 and November was 20,000. If you average out the three, it's $15,000. Take three months of that times it by three, your, your loan amount would be $45,000. If exceeds $100,000, we gotta remember that the max loan amount uh, for this is $100,000. So um, please note that the actual size of loan for which you may be approved will be determined by the lender after review of your business documentation and financial information. The amount of the loan for which you are ultimately approved may be less than the amount indicated by example above. If the average uh, monthly revenues for your business for the three month period is greater than 100,000, again, the loan max, the loan amount that we can give out would be $100,000. What are the terms? So there's two terms for these, uh, for these, these two, for these loans. And this, the loan terms will be based on the lenders based on the repayment, the, the ability of a repayment. So for a five-year term, the repayment details are as follows. So for, for the months one through 12, so the first years, it's gonna be interest only payments associated for the loan. So the remaining four years is gonna be principal and interest payments. So it's gonna be amortized for the last four years, right? Um, 36 months, three years would be same, same structure, just shorter term. Um, one year, one, one through 12 months of um, payments will be applied to all these interests associated with the loan, and then the remaining two years will be the, prin the principal and interest. So again, terms, five, five years or three years. Rates, the interest rate for this loan, now we are offering the fix at 4.25. So if you are matched with Access Plus Capital, um, the, loan, the loan interest rate, the loan, the interest rate for the loan would be 4.25. And this is a fixed rate. Um, here's some examples as to what the, the payments will look like. So let's say we're using a five-year uh, term. If you were to do a um, $100,000 loan, your interest for the month, your monthly interest payment would be 354. If it's 50,000, it'd be 177. If it's 20,000, it'd be 70. Once it goes into the, the you've, it's fully amortized and we're gonna be paying back the loan, these would be the payments for the loan. So, um, the final payment may differ, uh, just an FYI, but this is just a kind of illustration of what it, it might look like. So I know this is a big question for everybody. What can, I, my, 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 uh, what can I use my loan for? So the proceeds can be used for working capital, inventory, marketing, refitting for new social guidelines um, or distancing guidelines, excuse me, operating emergency maintenance, property taxes, utilities, rent, supplies, and other appropriate business purposes. Um, I did notice in the the Q and A that there, you know, can we refinance um, existing debt? Um, yes, you can. Um, and this again, kind of case by case scenario, as it goes to the guidelines of the lender. But um, it did say on our manual from the state that um, it can be used to refinance high interest uh, debt. Um, but it cannot be refinanced. You cannot refinance community lender money. So if you have a loan with me, and I just had this example, if you have a loan with me, you can use your funds to refinance with us. It's because we are community development and we're offering this and the state said, unfortunately, you know, we can hire, you can pay off high interest debt, but you cannot pay off community development lenders. So, um, you know, that was kind of a, a eye opener for me because that was part of the questions and. I was like, okay, you know, experiences, I had to let a customer know or an applicant know that unfortunately, since you have a loan through us, we, you can't pay that. We can't, you can't pay us off. Um, so what's all the business, <clears throat> uh, what are the requirements? So again, just so what we mentioned earlier, it's 50 or fewer employees uh, prior to March, 2020. Please know any and all affiliates are accounted in on this total, including business with shared ownership. The business must have gross revenues of less than 2.5 million in 2019. 
suffered a direct economic hardship um, as a result of COVID-19, which has materially impact impacted operations um, as evidenced by at least 25% reduction in revenues since January 20, uh, 2020, have shown an ability to return at least 30% of pre-COVID revenues related to a similar period of the period year, demonstrated positive net income in 2019. This, this was a question that we had. So let's say your business did um, show a loss. Uh, let's say $5,000. I'm gonna keep the simple math just for the sake of my mind. Um, $5,000 of a, a loss. However, the state did say that we can add back um, amortization and depreciation. So if you had an, a loss of $5,000, but your depreciation was up 20,000, was, was 20,000, then your net profit is gonna be 15. So we were able to add that. So if if that that is a, a question I know some others might have, but if there was a loss, but your amortization and your depreciation was added back and it shows a positive, uh, uh, there was a, pro a profit, then you're, you're eligible. The business must have been operated at least since ju uh, June 30th, 2019. And the, the main office or headquarters for the business must be in California. The loan amount must be used to support only a business, uh, businesses, California operations. So, what are we going to be looking for when it comes to uh, showing the re showing if the loan is going to get approved? We're going to be looking at if the guarantor's ability to pay back the loan, if the that the guarantor can um, has the ability to pay back the loan in full, the ability to adequately make payment debt payments from revenues earned, monthly business debt service, including this new loan to 2019 revenue ratio must be less than 25 percent. Neither the guarantor nor any other of the beneficial owners is involved in an active bankruptcy. No 30 days or more delinquents, delinquencies into January or February of 2020. No more than 160 day uh, delayed delinquency. No charges and no uh, no charges and no discharge bankruptcies from March 19th, March of uh, March 1st of 2019 through March February 29th, 2020. Neither the guarantor nor any of the beneficial ownership has been the subject of a repossession or foreclosure in the past 36 months. There are no outstanding tax liens or judgments against the guarantor or beneficial owners unless the owner or owners, unless subject to an active payment plan for at least six, six consecutive months. And there's no outstanding unpaid child support owned by the guarantor or beneficial owners. As well as eligible, those were basically uh, what we'd be looking for to show eligibility. Um, does the business need to be based in California? Yes, it does. Um, what information would be required? So this is this is what I was talking about. It's, it's to me, it's minimal. Um, you know, I apologize if I say that in advance, but it's there's not much. It's just you just have to provide 20 year um, 2019 tax returns. Uh, us as Access Capital, we are requiring two um, two bank statements. So the most two most recent bank statements, schedule a schedule of ownership, so name, address, social security number, um, employee ID number, um, individual tax ID number. Uh, phone number, email, percentage, ownership, photo ID for any um, with more of 20% ownership. Brief description of COVID-19 impacts on jobs and revenues. So that we generated a COVID-19 questionnaires. It, it, I believe it's like seven or eight questions about, uh, you know, how has it impacted you? What measurements have you taken since COVID and stuff like that. Um, it's a simple questionnaire. Uh, it doesn't take long to, to fill out. Um, entity docs. So, for example, if you have articles, of, if it's an, um, a corporation, we'll need the articles of incorporation and the bylaws. Lease agreement. If you're housed, if you're operating from a strip center, a shopping center, an office, or whatnot, um, we will need a lease agreement. But if you're operating from your own home, we will not need this. Personal guarantees. So, all any owners that have ownership of 20% will have to guarantee the loan. And other documentation may be required um, at the lender. So uh, the other only documentation that we would be requiring would be a current profit and loss statement. Um, so what types of uh, businesses would not be eligible for, for this loan? So firms engaged in activities that are prohibited by federal law or applicable law in applicable law in the jurisdiction where the business is located or conducted. Business engaged in speculative uh, activities that develops profits from fluctuation in price rather than through the normal course of trade. Facilities primarily used for gambling or to facilitate gambling. Firms engaged primarily in lobbying activities, passive real estate investments. Um, do I need collateral for this? No, there's no really specific collateral for this. We just, they're gonna um, put a UCC filing on it. So we could be first or second lien. Um, and, and any owners with more 20% ownership will sign a personal guarantee. So they have to guarantee a loan. What if I don't speak any uh, speak English? What languages are supported? So 
The online application form on this site can be completed in English, Spanish, French, Russian, Chinese, and Korean. Certain community lenders may also offer in-house support with language translation, see below. So we can, you can either call here to see what, where can you get um, support for those, for those that have language barriers to, to fill out the application, or you can email them. Uh, or, hope, or if you need other English, Spanish, please contact the Small Business Loan Center and hopefully they can um, they, uh, refer you to the right, um, right department to help you out with that. Um, are there any fees? So the max fees for this would be 250 and this would be, it can be uh, financed into a loan. If I, this is a great question and I got this multiple times. If I own more than one small business, can I apply for a loan for each of my business? And the answer is yes. As long as it's a separate entity with its own um, tax ID number and, and businesses combined employ 50 or fewer full-time um, employees, then you can apply for each business entity. Each business must be eligible eligibility requirements. So what I mentioned earlier in the, um, in the presentation, as long as it has less than 50 employees combined and has a separate entity in tax city, they can apply. Um, if my uh, application is rejected by the community lender that I choose on the online portal for the match that listed high yielded other lenders as well, can I apply to another community lender for a second look? So yes, you can, but um, what's lessened on here is most of us are, we're using the same guidelines. So if they say no, it might have, it'd be a higher chance to get the client elsewhere. Um, can I simultaneously apply to more than one lender for the program? The answer is no. Um, is this loan forgivable? Unfortunately, this is not for forgivable. The borrower will need to pay back the full amount of the loan with interest over a three to five year term. Please see the loan terms link for the uh, set of terms. So you can go on the link and just uh, check it out. Um, what if I miss a payment? So if you if you start missing payments and you fall delinquent, um, just like um, a traditional loan, we would, you know, count it as late, we'll, we'll report it to credit bureau and so forth. So um, this is the, basically the, the most frequently asked question for this, and I believe this was a great um, structure of how to present um, this loan. One thing is when, which what's going to happen is when you go to the, the, the state's website, the one I mentioned earlier, um, they're going to ask you questions. Once um, it asks you the questions, then the portal is gonna, is gonna either say, yes, you're eligible based on the information you provided. Uh, here are three lenders that you can choose from. So from there, you would choose whom you would wanna choose from, right? And then, so that lender will receive a notification, say, hey, there's a match between you and this business owner, here's the information. So we'll have your name, um, your address, your, 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 biz, your business name, email address, and so forth. And we will reach out to you. Um, my process is we get the notification, it gets assigned to me, we have an email that's already ready to go, generated, sends you the email, sends you the link to our online portal to apply for the application, and then you start, uh, you upload your documentations there. There is a dashboard that we look at, I look at every morning, and to make sure if there's an application that is in process, I typically like to reach out to the client and say, hey, I noticed you're in process, um, did you have any questions, are you having any problems with the, with the website? They say, no, I'm just collecting last minute documentation, perfect. Um, but let me know if this is in process or if it's completed. If it's completed, then I start working on it. I pull, I, I may, I don't do the full underwriting, but I do check certain things. I'll pull credit. Uh, credit, again, the part where I look at the credit, whether or not, um, if you have the, the delinquencies, if there's late payments and so forth, I have to review credit to make sure that you do not, you meet the guidelines based on the credit. Uh, we're not credit driven. It's not credit driven, I should say. The loan program is not credit driven, but it just wants to make sure that there's no past um, delinquencies that can disqualify you from this loan. Um, once, to me, it looks good. I submit it to the underwriter, and the underwriter will do his job and go over, you know, the, your debt, your so, uh, your your revenues, and so forth, and determine whether or not this loan will get approved. Um, we've had a, a number of um, of applicants so far. Um, um, Increase, I should say, because they're increases. They haven't all been submitted, but we're at about, we're at one three point one million in just increase alone for us to send those those emails. So, um, you know, we do have a certain amount of funds to exhaust. So, the sooner you get it in, um, you know, and if you're eligible, then you're you the sooner you get the money, and hopefully we still have the funds to exhaust. Um, other than that, um, I don't. I can leave my um, my contact information if you want to reach out to me um, on the group chat. Um, and um, questions or concerns, let me know. I, I'm here, you can email me, you can text me, you can call me, whichever you prefer. Um, other than that, that's, that's kind of all I got for, for, for the presentation as of right now. 
Well, then all I got is some questions for you, Ed. Sure. So let's start with, um, I chose one of the banks, but have not heard from them. How long should I wait? Okay. Um, if you haven't heard from them, from them um, I would say give it about five business days only because um, the first week for us, it, we were we were trying to um, strategize like, how are we going to do this? Because we have an influx of calls coming in or inquiries, but there's three of us that are doing this. So our, our boss had to assign them. So if for some reason, the individual that's an administrator that's getting these notifications is not there, it can delay the process. So that's one thing I can, I can definitely say. Give them about five business days. If you don't hear from them, I would definitely uh, call their local office and see um, if they received the application or if there's something wrong. One thing I did forget to mention, um, for some reason, our emails that are being sent out to the applicants, they're going into the spam folder. Why, we don't know. Um, I, I don't know how we can have control over that, but part of my introduction, when I call these individuals, I say, hey, can you know, I, I emailed you, um, you know, the link to our portal to apply, but look out for the email in your spam because I, I we keep getting feedback that's going to spam folder, not their actual inbox. Okay, next question uh, regarding the loan program. Is this a loan or a grant? It's a loan. This is not a grant. Unfortunately, this would have to be paid back. Uh, did you mention the terms or could you mention the terms again? Have they uh, sure. identified them? Yes. Yeah, so here is, let's see. So let's see. What if I do any collateral? What are the amounts of eligibility? Does my business? Um, so terms were three to five years. Um, so here's the terms. Um, it could be um, 36 months or five years. Um, first year's uh, interest only, then the remainder would be pay off the loan. And I believe um, it was on the last page that states that this is not a loan. This is not a grant. Does my business need to be do I need collateral? What if I don't have the application? If I call more? Okay, can I, uh, is this a uh, rebuilding fund for loan for forgivable? No, this is not a forgivable loan. This would have to be paid back with the terms agreed when it become, once you do the loan signing and you, the promissory note, the loan agreement, that's what your, your, um, your loan terms will be. Okay, next question is we tried to apply, but we were, we were disqualified because of where our business is located. Is this only for underserved and disadvantaged areas? So me and Kelly had this, this conversation earlier. I want to say no. Um, but again, I need to do a little bit more deep diving in this because we've had um, an applicant come through from Bakersfield, a couple actually. Um, I know I've seen a couple in Fresno. Um, I did see smaller communities like um, Stockton, I've seen Stockton, I've seen Madera, I've seen uh, Ripon, Ripon, I, I believe that's somewhere up north in Stanislaus County, but um, I don't, I want to say no, but I don't really have the answer to that because I've seen some applicants here in Bakersfield and in Fresno. Um, but I, I would like to get more information on that just based off, you know, the, those individuals that were um, declined based in their area. Okay, great. And Ripon is in San Joaquin County. Oh, okay. You learn those things when your college roommate is from Ripon. <laughs> you know, I was I was seeing these uh, small uh, the smaller communities when I was driving to Tahoe this past week. So I'm like, oh, that's where this county is. Oh, this is where it's at. I'm like, oh, okay. Now no, it's already clicking because I knew it was up north. So. so um, that's about all I see on the loan program. We have a plenty of other questions, so I'm going to get into some of these. And if you have any other questions for Ed, do go to the Q&A, and we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Um, let's start with, um, well, let's start at the top. And as, as Lisa, I'm not sure what you're saying. As stimulus goes, we've been helped, but are concerned about leakage and corruption and disbursement regarding the stimulus. Hopefully, uh, being from a business that has been significantly impacted like yours, uh, I'll answer that with the best way that I can. And that is just going to be, hopefully there's a second round of PPP for hospitality and businesses that have been, have been impacted so much. Uh, stimulus category for small business, any idea what type of businesses and is a PPP forgivable? I think right now, as far as that 288 million is what I think, or billion, boy, I got my mills and my bills confused today. 
288 billion for small business that has been proposed under that. Uh, I believe what you're looking at is, uh, is you're looking at a lot of negotiations before we get there. Everything that we talked about earlier was going to be a new round of PPP for basically hard to, you know, really hard hit industries. So your hospitality, your dining in restaurants, your motels, hotels, your events, uh, et cetera. So I imagine it's going to fall along those lines, but until we have an actual deal, we just don't know where it's going to go. Um, thank you, Elaine. Bank of America has not started the forgiveness portal process yet. Chase, I believe, is still taking them by invitation only through an email, and Chase was the largest of PPP lenders. Wells Fargo, last I heard, is still not engaged in the process. So your three major banks are pretty much still not going, but there's plenty of time. A uh, question from Carol regarding the, the SB 147 tax credit, and it has to do with income flowing through S corporations to their owners. Will they be able to take it individually? You know, Carol, this is a great opportunity uh, for me to talk about next week. Uh, next week, we're doing a tax program that uh, our special guest is going to be Lou Barbich of Barbich Hooper King Dylan Hoffman and maybe even uh, additional members of the firm. And we're gonna get into everything that's PPP related from, from the tax consequences. And I think this will be a great question for that for next week. Uh, so keep that one till next week. Uh, some of the other things that are here, I'm still in the chat. Let me go over to the Q and A. Oh, does the uh, small grant program for franchise, does the $500 small grant program apply to franchise businesses. So that would be, I believe, the franchise fee that is paid by a franchise. And I'm sure a franchise is considered a normal small business, um, which franchises are. They're just uh, ch chain companies, chain restaurants, or chain other type of entities um, where the bulk number are usually independent op operators. So yes, I would believe that that would be fine. Um, Eddie's got his contact there for you. And let's go to the Q&As now, because there's several questions there as well. So, um, uh, can you call me about the BCARES application to find out if I was granted? Uh, you'd be better to contact the city of Bakersfield. I can give you some contacts in order to maybe assist you. Uh, but if you have a question, I would go to the website that we normally go to. Didn't go to the website today out of time. Uh, but if you Google Be Cares and go to the city of Bakersfield website, you should find a contact person that maybe can help you to see if yours was particularly funded. Uh, will Mr. Palomar's document be available via email? We will include that in the email blast that we have, the link to it to where you can you can grab it. Um, Thank you, Brooke, for saying U.S. Bank is accepting uh, applications for forgiveness at this time. Joe, will the hiring tax credit require hiring additional people? Joe, great question for next week. Uh, I haven't got into the weeds in detail enough on that particular program yet. It could be just hiring back since we're going from that second quarter from April 1st, 19 to April 1st until June 30th of 2020, um, uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if it's just hiring back your additional people or hiring back more people and what the timelines, because that's really what's going to really kind of gear and dedicate that program. Is the best road to refinancing an SBA 7A loan with COBED type programs? Our lender has been, uh, has been willing to refi internally, has not been, has not been able to. Well, hopefully, uh, Lisa, you received the uh, the deferral for six months. It's actually not a deferral. It was SBA actually making your payments from likely around uh, um, April until October. So hopefully, uh, Umka hooked you up with that. I believe it was available to all people that had SBA loans, whether it be a 7A or 504. And I'm going to ask Eddie to even come in, jump in on this when I'm done. But the best way to refinance uh, uh, an SBA 7A loan, well, number one, since SBA 7A loans generally don't have, generally don't have, uh, you know, balloon payments, 
um, and it's for a term, be it five, seven, 10 years or whatever, I'm, I'm questioning why you might want to refinance it. Maybe the interest rate is higher um, and maybe save a little cash flow there. Uh, as far as some of the viable options, the COVID programs, probably not so much. Um, most of them are smaller, like the ones we talked about today, 25,000 and less. I know um, if there's real estate involved, you could look at potentially the SBA 504 loan if you own the real estate or other fixed assets. Eddie, is there something you'd like to add to that? Uh, no, I think if it's real estate, sometimes you you can go with, depending if you have a few years of tax returns, you can possibly go refinance with the conventional bank, which the rate might be a little bit lower and uh, you can probably get a, a longer term. Um, some banks do have, can amortize it for 25 years. I've seen that before. Um, so it, it, it depends, you kind of have to weigh up your options. But I think if you go, you can try a conventional route um, depending, you know, and also look at the terms agreement because I know some SBA loans cannot be refinanced with another SBA, I believe, but definitely would want to contact your, the, 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 the bank that you got the loan with. And there's a question if there's any plans to reclassify small businesses that are say a half a million annually in sales and under 20 employees. There are some other definitions out there like micro businesses and some others. But generally, the U.S. Small Business Administration, their general small business term are businesses that have 500 and fewer employees. Now, I realize that some of those are substantially uh, larger than small businesses or the term small businesses that we, we kind of equate with. But uh, it's going to be an individual case-by-case -case program if there's any reclass uh, to, to more of a type of a micro-sized uh, business. I have not heard of it any. You heard of any, Ed? No. And so what happens if you get both the idle and PPP? Is the PPP not forgiven? Let me back up just a little bit there. So if if you recall, there were two different types of idle loans. One was the idle loan itself, 30 years. We talked a little bit about it earlier. Then in the rush to get out CARES Act money uh, earlier during the pandemic, there was the idle advance. And if you recall, the idle advance was an advance on your idle that was going to be taxable. So you could have received a PPP loan. You could have received an idle advance up to $10,000 and an idle loan up to $150,000. So if you received your, first and foremost, your PPP is forgivable. If as long as you follow the parameters, use 60% for salaries and wages, et cetera, uh, it is forgivable. And what won't be forgiven out of that though is going to be the idle advance. So if you received, and that was generally um, $1,000 per employee up to 10. And so if you received an idle advance, you're, you can have your PPP loan completely forgiven but you would still have to repay back the idle advance. Okay. We talked a little bit about the new state grant that's coming that would be uh, forgiven. So we won't go to there with that question. Um, Eddie, question for you here. Will the state funding opportunity be based on personal cr uh, credit or business credit? So not necessarily, again, um, as long as the criteria that was on that documentation state that you didn't have um, any, let's say, prepossessions in the past 36 months, um, you don't have a 60 day late, uh, a recent 60 days late, there's, a, there's one that says um, you can't have the 30 day late. So that, that email, that documentation that we will be sending out does have those credit terms on there. Um, but it's not typically based on credit score. It's not credit score driven, but you can't have recent bank, you can't have bankruptcies, recent bankruptcies. Um, it's, it's on there. There's, there's a, a good page of it, like half a page of that stuff. So let me see if I can get to it. Um, okay. Um, but, but it will be on there. It, it's on there. It's, it tells you what they're going to be looking for. Hey, um, I'm not clear. 
uh, if your business had to be established before 2019? So and on there, so yes, it, it has to be established by, by June of 19. Okay. June 30th. So the business must have been in operation since at least June 30th, 2019. Which would have been the end of the second quarter, 2019. And did I understand that you had to have a profit? Yes. So it did say there has to be a profit, but you can add back the amortization and depreciation to, to profit for that year. So if you look at your tax returns and you see a pro, uh, again, the uh, let's say again for the same example, you had a negative, uh, a profit of a loss of a loss of five thousand, but you had an amortization of twenty thousand, then your profit is fifteen thousand. So that will make you eligible for, for that's part of the eligibility. You do meet one of the requirements for eligibility for the, for the loan. Are you eligible for an idle loan if you received an idle advance? The answer to that would be yes. But generally, the idle advances were generated off of an idle application. Mm -hmm. So if you just received the idle advance, then and didn't receive an idle loan in total, um, maybe there was an issue with your application. And that would be really something you might want to consider going through the reconsideration process. Uh, we've talked about this quite a bit in the past. If you email me, I can give you information on it. The contact information, it's done out of SBA disaster back in Texas. But you can contact them for any type of idle reconsiderations. But generally, if you receive the idle advance, it is because they received your idle loan and they advanced you money based on doing an idle. And if they didn't do the idle, maybe there was something that was some emails back and forth that were incomplete or other aspects of it that termed you to be uh, potentially uh, not funded with the idle. Okay. That, uh, that, that sounds like it. And uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us today. It's great. Thank you for coming on along with us today, Eddie. No it was great having me. you. Thank you. We have a lot of uh, a lot of questions answered. Ran a little bit long, but uh, if you have any other questions and you know where to contact Eddie, uh, good program. And we'll be back next week with some more. So, for Edward Palomar, I'm Kelly Bearden. We'll be back next Wednesday. Hope to see you then. Have a great week. Bye-bye now. Bye, guys.